Um, but good afternoon, youth family. Um, I'm excited to be here today to talk about the House and Ball community, a community I'm a part of, but also means so much to me and um, many others on this call and in the collaborative. Um, so given that this is 10 minutes, this is my disclaimer that you won't learn everything about the House and Ball community, but I hope that it'll resonate with you and your work, um, the communities you serve, and how we can elevate the voices of those specifically queer people of color whose narratives are often left out of historical narratives, um, of community organizing, liberation movements, and in this context, discourse combating HIV. Um, so since it's World Pride and 50 years of Stonewall here in New York City this week, um, it's a really great time for us to reflect um, on this being more than an annual festival or rainbow themed parties. Um, it really started off as a protest led by trans women of color, namely Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, against the oppressive forces that try to get them to silence, shrink, and diminish their truth. Um, so the house wall community, as you will learn, was also started by a trans woman of color, Crystal LaBeja, creating a space where gender fluid and sexually expansive individuals could choose their families and where mothers, fathers, and members of the community did not have to play traditional gender roles. Um, this alternative kinship structure is a homegrown solution keeping many of our sexual and gender expansive youth and adults of color alive today. So today I'm going to tell you a story of what some may call a community of risk or at risk for HIV to shifting, hopefully shifting your um, narrative and consciousness to a community of resilience, of promise, of love, of authentic living, of unapologi unapologetically living in their truth, and of radical understanding. Next slide. So the Housewell community is an underground sexual and gender expansive people of color subculture that's been mobilizing throughout large urban cities throughout the United States to address issues related to social justice and human rights issues, specifically health disparities related to economically rooted issues that impact health outcomes, such as HIV. Um, it was created in response to the isms, classism, racism, heterosexism, phobias, transphobia, homophobia, femphobia, um, discrimination, oppression, and marginalization marginalization from society. Um, in fact, it's probably the only space where people of expansive experience hang out, intimately share space, and call each other family. Um, the housewall community can also be characterized as embracing all diversity, culture as identity, artistic expression, and many other things. But what's most important is that it meets the unique needs of its members and provides a space of hope and survival. Next slide. <clears throat> That being said, I really want to frame the conversation around intersectionality and health equity. Um, so intersectionality being an approach to understanding and influencing the multiple forces that shape social inequalities and discrimination. As such, it can serve as a useful framework for public health action to improve social determinants of health, health equity, and for our collaborative health disparities. Um, so this community lies at the center of every intersectional identity, vulnerability, uh, social justice, human rights, and social determinants of health issue that we, are, we see today. Um, so does HIV. HIV could definitely be the word in the middle of that circle too. Um, so from where I stand as a member of the community and doing research with my community, um, intersectionality is the ability for us to view individuals and communities from a more complex and diverse uh, perspective knowing that not only one or two characteristics such as sexuality and gender affect who we are, our, our health and our overall well-being, but also recognizing that people are multifaceted people from specific places, cultures, lived experiences, creed, languages, and ethnicity. And they have a place, or in this case, no place in society in terms of power and privilege except for in the housewall community itself. With that being said, Intersectionality is the recognition of our multiple identities and factors that affect who we are and where we end up in terms of our health and well-being. And as best stated by Audre Lorde, there's no such thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives. Next slide. Okay, so in understanding intersectionality and how it relates to health disparities and health inequities, it would seem that our systems are failing our communities, my community. Um, so therefore, I ask these two questions to better understand what it is about the houseball community specifically that has sustained itself for so long and how they have created an alternative kinship structure to keep its community alive. So these two questions, which I hope to answer by the end of the presentation are, one, what are the systems that sexual and gender expansive people of color create to sustain their own lives? And two, how do we begin to understand the houseball community as a system that implements their own homegrown interventions that leads to its resiliency and survival? Next slide. 
So the houseball community is a marginalized group within an already marginalized community. Um, it evolved from drag shows and pageants during the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s due to overt discrimination and racism when drag queens were expected to whiten their appearance to help their chances at winning competitions. Um, this is a time when the overall mother and founder of the community, Crystal LaBeja, pictured here, founded the first house, the House of LaBeja, in 1977. Next slide. So the community is comprised of two primary elements, houses and balls. Houses are a collective of people, chosen family, who share communal lifestyle. Balls are social events where houses and individuals gather to engage in performance competition. Basically, within the houses and balls are where individuals can express themselves freely, live in their absolute truth, find and explore self-love, and are really liberated to express non-traditional gender roles. Um, here, Willie Ninja is serving Vogue, a form of creative and artistic expression created by the houseball community. Next slide. Um, so this is the structure of the houseball community. Um, it was really established and functions as a kinship system uh, to meet the unique needs of its participants for social solidarity, identity development, mentoring, and guidance, while also being really flexible to uh, respond to the ever-changing needs, social conditions, and needs of uh, the community, um, such as the HIV epidemic, which I'll talk about a little bit more soon. Um, and the relationships and dynamics of the community are nuanced within these spaces. Houses have regular meetings, Mothers and fathers and community members provide support, development, mentoring, and guidance. Um, they don't play traditional gender roles, and there are various social networks and outlets where members communicate often. Further, house parents and community members can provide a home when youth become homeless, encourage them to go get tested, go to their HIV medical appointments, go to school, obtain employment, etc. So some of the youth that are my kids or not even my kids may ask me for clothes to borrow for a job interview or to sleep on my couch. Those are just like real examples of how we kind of navigate outside of the systems that may not respond to their needs. Next slide. So the hospital community bears a disproportionate burden of HIV infection due to the community being largely comprised of sexual and gender expansive youth of color. And there's only two studies right now that looked at hospital community specific seroprevalence prevalence rates, one in New York City at 17% and one in San Francisco at 27% respectively. Um, they also bear a disproportionate burden of HIV due to the number of structural and psychosocial, stress, psychosocial stressors they experience. Um, remember the intersectionality uh, circles earlier. And currently there are no evidence informed or based community level interventions for ballrooms specifically at the community level, nor are there any for people of trans, gender nonconforming, non-binary experience, nor que queer people of color. Um, therefore, the ballroom community really does provide a much needed social structure, support, and sense of family for folks. Um, and research also suggests that marginalized youth may join the houseball community subculture in order to receive uh, validation and shape identity development, and that such affiliation can reduce the negative impacts of stigma and other life stress. Uh, finally, this community has been extremely proactive in leading the response to the HIV epidemic in their community, creating their own homegrown interventions that are conducted and sustained through practices and processes within the community itself. Next slide. So when I was aging out of being a youth myself, I started working at the HEAT program with Dr. Jeffrey Birnbaum, who's our medical expert on this call, and our, as part of our affinity faculty, and he's worked with the community directly to create and sustain homegrown interventions that are culturally responsive. Um, at HEAT, homegrown solutions were created with the community members itself, specifically houseball community youth, leading to several houseball-specific interventions known as both theory, utilizing Vogue with educating folks on HIV-related topics throughout the curriculum, uh, a Vogue prep campaign, um, and just one of the girls for trans women of color, along with an adapted version of Many Men, Many Voices, or 3MV, as some of you may know, for same gender loving, loving and expansive men of color. Next slide. Um, these are also other examples of homegrown initiatives and spaces created by and for the house ball community. So initiatives such as House Lives Matter and Keeping Ballroom Community Alive Network are doing work around community organizing. Uh, some of the topics that are being discussed right now are de decriminalizing sex work and holding rallies to humanize and make visible the deaths of black trans women across the country. Um, along with nonprofit organizations, you'll see here Destination Tomorrow and Princess Janae's House. They're both led by 
I iconic black trans men from the ballroom community, focusing on services specific to ballroom community members, but also really for people of trans, non-conforming, non-binary experience and queer experience. So as you can see, the houseball community is at the forefront of saving their own lives and are truly indeed communities of resilience, strength, and promise, not communities just at risk. Next slide. Okay, so this is kind of like my last slide and my shameless plug slide. Um, if you download the slides, there's two links to YouTube videos that you can watch really quickly to get some more information. Um, Kiki is a movie specifically about young folks of ballroom and the Kiki scene. Um, you can also watch the show Pose on FX on Tuesday, Tuesday evenings at 10 p.m. Uh, tonight, actually, is the third episode of season two. Um, and if that's too late for some of you all, then you can watch it at a later time. But I also know that a lot of viewing parties might be fun for young people that you may be serving if you do serve people from the um, ballroom community, but also just of the sexual and gender expansive communities that you may be working with. Um, and lastly, you know, the show really talks about HIV and, and also, more importantly, puts at the forefront the narratives of black, brown, queer people, specifically trans women of color who are often invisibilized. So it's about time that our narratives and stories are at the forefront of um, media and mainstream. Um, so, but what I really want to leave you with is this, um, you know, reimagine young folks having the agency and capacity to be empowered to create change for themselves and for their communities. Community and patient involvement are really key to addressing health disparities and health inequities, as you saw with some of the examples of the homegrown interventions that have happened. Um, but before I leave you today, I just want to showcase um, a current partnership we have with Equinox, kind of like a high-end gem in New York City that wanted to do something for Pride, and it really elevates um, lovely legends and icons of ballroom, trans women of color specifically, showing off their voguing skills, but most importantly, living in their truth and artistically expressing themselves as liberated women. So I hope this will give you some life today. Happy summer, happy pride, and cheers to all of you for your amazing work. Ty, you can definitely pump that beat for me, please. Life is a ball. Hands, 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 hands in the air. Can you show with a sad walk there? Talk about hands, 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 hands. Boom. Walk. The duck walk, 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 the duck duck walk. Let's spin, 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 spin. I whip my hair. Can I get a dip, dip, dip? Can I get a dip, dip, dip? Get it in a dip for me. It's the power of the dips you see. Yes, this is for performance. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Awesome. That was amazing, Jen. Thank you so much uh, for sharing all of that information with us. Uh, Ty, do you want to take the slides down? Does anybody have any questions or comments for Jen? I know this, I, every space I go into around the country, I hear a lot about house ball community from different places. And I just wanted to make sure we carved out some time for anyone who wanted to ask questions or make comments about uh, any of the information you just learned. Or I can tell you, Jen is a wealth of knowledge about this community and if you have a something that wasn't touched on and still want to ask feel free to do so so jen i had a question for you actually which is uh one of the things i've seen uh keys and i were actually typing about this just a minute ago uh, is a lot of public health entities uh, who have kind of grabbed this idea of a ball uh, and like say, oh, we're going to host a ball in our community because we have young gay men of color and this is going to be the way that we reach them. But what I don't always see is the association with the network of social support that comes behind the ball, which is the house. And so I was wondering if you had any thoughts or reflections on uh, attempting to use a structure like that without kind of having the other structure with it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, what I definitely didn't say is that you can just go and throw a ball and be connected with this community and think that, you know, it's it's easy to do. But um, 
I think, like Jeff just put into the chat room, it's really important to have the people that you want um, involved in these spaces to be at the forefront of throwing that ball or engaging people in the community. And there's something really special about the kinship structure from my own parents and ballroom to the kids and everyone and how we're really connected and knowing, okay, this agency is really, really safe or we should go to this ball as before it's bespoke. So it really does matter to utilize that kinship structure and um, have ties with community. And, you know, if you hire people from the community, um, they're really like your um, experts in how to do that work and also um, they should have be liberated enough and supported enough to do that themselves um, and yeah balls great you can do some testing and all of that but at the same time what's most important is that you're celebrating uh, folks who don't traditionally have spaces to um, celebrate who they are and you know in society that tells them that they're not valuable or deemed worthy it's really important that that space is not just about the testing and HIV, you know, a lot of them always talk about, you know, HIV is not at the forefront. It's like, as long as we take care of all these other things, that'll come out and we will share that with you. That is not just the one thing we're coming for this fall for. You know, we are here to be in community with one another and share space and love one another and, you know, give each other life. So I don't know if I answered your question well, but I think it's, it's like being very respectful of the community and also just you know, supporting them, but working alongside them and allowing them to create the spaces that you want um, created, if you can. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. Uh, Jeff, did you have something to add? Yeah, just, you know, a little fine tuning of, of uh, or taking Jen's comments a little further. Um, we've been working with the community for a number of years, um, hosting hosting um, one or two balls per year of, of our own, our own program, uh, um, hosting a ball, um, calling it the heat ball. And, um, and so those, those events can get fairly expensive and there's kind of an art to using um, your own event to um, promote services and just your credibility with, 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 with the community at large. And, you know, there's a, a lot you have to know just to, 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 to throw a ball just in terms of who else is throwing a ball and what are the